Due to the declaration of emergency, this meeting is being held pursuant to authorization from the governor's executive order. Some or all of the city council members may participate for iPad or via phone is available on today's agenda. Members of the public will be able to make public comments by submitting them via email by 10 a.m. Tuesday, March 30th, 2021 to ggarcia at colexico.ca.gov or via fax to 760-768-2103. These comments will be read aloud during the meeting. Make public, you can, to make a public comment via Zoom, please submit your request via the Zoom chat and specify whether you're going to have a public comment or state that it, the agenda item number. Roll call. Okay. Mayor Rola Fernandez. Here. Mayor Bertemp Moreno. Here. Councilmember Ureña. Councilmember Ureña. Yes. Okay. Councilmember Romo. Councilmember Ureña. Councilmember Garcia. Yes. We have a quorum. Councilmember Romo. Here. Councilmember Garcia. Here. We have a quorum. Okay. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We pledge to provide effective and efficient services in a courteous and respectful manner to improve the quality of life for all in our unique border community. Viva Calexico. Thank you, Madam Mayor. God of justice and mercy, thank you for the gift of life and the opportunity to serve the people of Calexico. As we gather here today, I ask for your guidance, wisdom, and respect for one another. I ask for your blessings and our responsibility to serve the common good, good of all. Councilmember Romo? Aye. Councilmember Garcia? Aye. Councilmember Ureña? Aye. Mayor Bertrand Moreno? Aye. Mayor Rola Fernandez? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Um, these proceedings may be viewed on the City of Calexico website at www.calexico.ca.gov a Friday following the City Council meeting. Community office hours with Mayor Arriola Fernandez will be held on the fourth Tuesday of the month from 2 to 4 p.m. Please contact the City Clerk's Office at 760-768-2102 for an appointment. We have no public comments at this time now. Oh, yeah. Uh, Madam Mayor, members of the city council, members of the Hard community that are following the team. Um, I want to welcome to the city of Mexico, Ken Hunt from Hunt Group. Uh, Hunt Group has been doing uh, a third party audit for the city of Mexico. And at this point right now, I um, want to emphasize uh, that uh, we are doing this part of the process, of the auditing process on a timely manner. Uh, Mr. Ken Hunt will be providing us a presentation uh, of the fiscal year 1920 audited financial statements. Uh, as we know, uh, this is a, a requirement um, that we must divide by a set of local government entity in the state of California. Uh, so, with that in mind, uh, I welcome Mr. Kent Thank you. Good afternoon, Mayor, uh, member of the City Council. My name is Kent Hunt. Uh, the managing partner of the of the fund group and also the uh, technical partner 
as the firm might do, who will be the uh, audit of the uh, financial statement. So, presenting to you today is the uh, audit, audited financial statement for so, uh, a sustained uh, presentation. So, give you a chance to ask any questions that you may have regarding this financial statement. I know I did actually pre prepare a highlighted PowerPoint presentation, and if you like, I'll go into the detail of the financial statement uh, after I, I go through the uh, 30,000 good highlight of the, uh, the scope of work and some of the required communications. So, um, our firm is being engaged by the city to perform a couple of things. So, let's go to uh, the scope of work. Have you ever played that song? Thank you so much. Um, uh, so basically today what we are going through is the scope of work. Uh, some required communications, going through the 30,000 foot overview of the financial statement, but again I'm going through the actual financial statement, kind of walk you through all the detail, and the last one I'll use is talk about the board of results. A little bit about the firm of the has been in the industry for uh, for the last nine years, just uh, quick. Uh, uh, meet the, uh, the uh, uh, my peers anniversary on March 1st. Uh, but I've been in the industry for over 21 years. I'm one of the recognized leaders in the industry. Uh, basically, I'm uh, on the Terror Society CPA, the uh, Medical Accounting and Audit, Auditing Committee, basically looking at all the new guest announcements that is applicable to the city of Kalaxico and the state and other state and local government. And I've been um, also a technical reviewer. On a uh, national um, audit tools, which is fully like uh, wisely used, utilized by uh, by the uh, market. So, a um, couple of the things. Uh, let's go down the scope of work. Uh, the scope of work, including the audit of the basic financial statement. And I'll switch it to two slides now. So, the audit of the basic financial statement basically covered the whole entire transaction all the financial transactions of the city of Colossico from July 1st, 2019, all the way up to June 30th, 2020. We are required to perform the audit in accordance with AICK generally accepted auditing standard. However, the city actually do require us to perform the audit in accordance with the government auditing standard. So that's part of the second rule of thumb here is the report on the control I'm just going to bring it. So in the meantime, just clicking it. We also require to do the yes. I perform audit on the city's TDA, Article 3 and Article 8 e financial state audit, and also look at the Under the Prop 13, we have to perform three account procedures to recalculate the appropriation funding that was being adopted by the city. Last one of these is going through the implementation of the post office. The next. next slide. Oh, okay. So, right. before I move on to yes, the other so so mm -hmm. the so the the as the auditor, as a third party under the uh, current professional scheme, mm -hmm. um, since we are being engaged with the one we are here. Thank you. 
the governmental accounts in is the same setting on the state and local government. So that's what the city is uh, fulfilling the reporting requirements on the gas people. Our responsibility is to plan and perform the audit to obtain reasonable terms and determine the financial statement on free from the material statement, whether due from fraud or errors. We are not here to do your budget thing, do your accounting, we are here to audit both and perform examination. We consider the funds approval and legal reporting, however, such consideration is solely for the purpose of determining the audit procedure and not to provide an insurance on the effectiveness of the control. However, we identify any internal control matter that is deemed to be material weaknesses or significant uh, deficiency. We are required to report it under the government audit scheme of the report on the internal control. Next slide. So, required to meet communications is actually found by the AUC sections 260 communications with those charter counties, which is the report to the city council. Let's go to slide seven. Yes, next slide. Thank you. So, under um, the reply communication, there is a series of the uh, information that we provide the, uh, to the city council here. So, one is talking about ethics and uh, independence. Uh, very importantly, we, we, we have outlined ethical rules and a couple of the things under the government audience scheme that is that we are actually assisting the city in preparing the, uh, the financial statement and contributing to the government all the government and all the others. So uh, there are a couple of procedures that we need to perform. We need to first determine that the city do have someone that has the skill, knowledge, and experience to take responsibility of this financial statement. Second, we also at the firm level, we need to have some, um, someone in our firm, which is independent of the seat of the engagement team to review these financial statements to address some of the threat that we have identified. So uh, we are happy to say that we comply with all the other requirements under the government standard regarding independence. As you aware, the city is required to adopt several accounting policies. There are a lot of different policies out there, so the, the city disclosed all significant accounting policy in note one to the financial statement. Basically, note one to the financial statement disclosed the sum like the uh, at a very high level, talking about the reporting entity, how you account for um, for cash investment, how you account for uh, fixed asset, the assumption that was being uh, used in the pension accounting, those kind of things. Or to the financial statement. Well, a lot of people know that the mental accounting is memorized. They always want to speak up with the new accounting standard, but because of COVID 19 last year, so um, yes, we actually issued a new pronouncement to postpone uh, certain financial stock uh, of certain authoritative guidance. So that's me for this year. There's no need to count the principal that needs to be implemented for the current fiscal year. Under the US GAAP, the city is required to report some estimate on these financial statements to make sure that it is fully disclosed, uh, making all the tools, uh, uh, all the uh, tools of the liability is already included in each financial statement. There are a couple of things that um, needs to be subjective estimate on each financial statement. One is the fair values on, on the investment. So basically, we are not only looking at cost, but if there is any unrealized gain or unrealized loss, we are required to reflect those unrealized gain or loss in the financial statement. For capital asset, that's including the infrastructure, the building, the vehicle, all the street and roads, uh, those have a useful life of those assets. So that's the there are appreciation over the life of the uh, Net pension liability and net impact liabilities. It's all under the SP statement number 68 and 75, which was adopted on the five 
this show and a few years ago for our whole time. So well, those two line items, so the city actually used actuary information. The actuary is to determine the full pension and full time liability, and it also determine how much money that you have in the revocable trust so that you can determine the net pension and full time liability on the face of the, uh, on the financial statement. There are certain assumptions that was being used, such as the discount rate. Um, I mean, this cap rate is actually based out of the expected long term rate of return on investment. So, determine the, um, the uh, liabilities on both pension and the cap. So, for pension liability, because the city is a participant of CalPERS, so that means that you, every month, you do actually uh, contribute and take like, the, uh, the uh, um, payments to CalPERS. As a, as a revocable trust, so that's why you do have a net pension liability uh, reported on the face of the financial statement. But the other one, the full cut liability, which is the other person employment benefit other than pension, which is the medical, uh, medical uh, insurance for um, retiree, the city is using what we call the ASU code method. So basically, based on the premium that you incur during every month. Not actually set aside the loan uh, in the local trust. So, therefore, the, uh, the city is reporting the full impact liability on the face of the financial statement just without having trust. So, um, there are a couple of things that we, we also require is uh, to disclose to you some sensitive uh, disclosure in the financial statement. And those two basic financial statements is important. It's not only talking about the number, but a lot of detailed information that you may want to look at. So, um, look one, as I said earlier, this is the summary of the economy policy that the city adopted, so which is uh, I always refer to as a sensitive uh, disclosure. Um, look number nine and number ten is talking about the financial plan and the impact plan. Look eleven is commitment and contingency. As, as you're aware, this year we are all focused on, on things that's related to COVID-19. So we do actually have um, a couple of um, men talking about the, the, the um, COVID-19 and the subsequent event, also with the uh, corona, uh, the, uh, coronavirus from the Wuhan has came from the Wuhan um, finance from the state. We are happy to say that there is no uncorrected statement. So basically, if we, we have any uncorrected statement, we are required to report that to you. Um, once in a while, the, the city may seek a second opinion on any kind of long term treatment. So uh, during the current fiscal year, uh, we, uh, uh, to the best of our knowledge, and also coming from management, there will be no such consultation from another CPA or uh, or other accountants, we call it the audit and, and other matters. We encountered no significant difficulties in dealing with mention, and also we do not have any disagreement with mention in terms of accounting treatment or our procedures performed. So, uh, the 30,000 foot overview of the financial statement. So, um, this is the net position based at the consolidated level. So, um, which is coming from the government wide financial statement. So, we break it down into governmental activities and business type activities. So, the governmental activities, which includes the, uh, the general fund, all the special revenue fund, debt service fund, capital projects fund, and the commercial fund, while the business type activities, all the enterprise fund that you have, such as water and sewer. So, uh, we basically put this in a format in accordance with gas 34 which is adopted about 20 years ago. So this is a full picture of the financial statement. So at the end of the day of June 30th, because this um, this slide is actually a point in the current financial statement, which basically reflecting the financial position as of June 30, 2020. So total asset as of June 30, 2020, $210 million. That's include all the infrastructure, all the capital asset, all the cash investment that you see at the city. Total liability, 
hundred and seven million dollars. That's including all the long term debt, all the pension and full time liabilities, uh, including vendors and accounts payable, and also including payroll that we go to the employee. So that's added up to hundred and seven million dollars. The deferred inflows and deferred outflows are two elements added by a couple of years ago when we first implemented the SB 68 and 75, which is pension accounting and also the OPAP accounting. Those two line items we treated either as a prepaid expense or a unearned revenue. So those are basically accumulate some of the resources that is being used in the, um, in the actuarial uh, assumption, and those are not reflecting um, what we defer in, and amortize uh, within the next five years. So those are the numbers included in, in these two line items. Resulting in the net position. The net position are called as a equity of the, uh, of the city. So the equity of the city is about like $101 million, of which 74.6 million dollars is net investment in capital asset. Keep that in mind. Yes, we actually did a really, really good job in coughing up all the things related to capital asset. Because capital asset is not easy, easily converted into cash or anything that needs to be used to pay for the capital asset will be netted against, netted against it. So at June 30, 2020, the net investment in capital asset is about 75 million. Restricted. Restricted net position is actually either restricted by third party or enabling legislation. So pulling about like 44.4 million dollars. A lot of times when you look at restricted, you can see all the majority of your special revenue fund, the debt service fund, those are actually restricted by by a, the, uh, the nature of the funding source coming into the city. And also, after uh, netting out all the expense pieces, the remaining amount that still remain restricted by, by that work purpose. For example, I'm uh, restricted deficit at about like $17.6 million. If you recall, you have to for the pension accounting, uh, those numbers should be a positive number uh, because of the uh, employment before the accomplished employment benefit. Drive the numbers to the deficit position. So, the next slide is the uh, consolidated information about the income statement for the, uh, for the, uh, for the city. So, total expenses when we added all the funds we could uh, uh, for the city is about $36.7 million. Um, that can be paid by two things. Either the program revenue, which you can charge the user for a fee, which is the charges for service, or maybe we can subsidize by the grant. Okay? So total um, program revenue for the year is about like twenty five point three million dollars. So resulting in net cost of service is about like eleven point four million dollars, and this eleven point four is basically covered by the general uh, revenue. So the full general revenue for the year, $17 million. So for the current fiscal year, we had a really, really good surplus of $5.6 million, of which 4.5 is actually coming from the enterprise fund, and then also $1.1 million in from the other uh, All the government funds, including general fund, special revenue fund, uh, and, and uh, which is these two types of funds uh, coming up with the, uh, the uh, surplus. The general fund is the main operating fund of the city, so basically I'll always look at our fund and in fund balance as of June 30, 2020. So um, the sit um, under the SB statement number 54, we need to break it down to the uh, fund balance is the one of the things that in the general fund fund balance is called non spendable fund balance. It's either a long-term receivable that is being reported. Or a sum, something that you are going to pay for, which is the inventory for prepaid items. So at June 30, 2020, we uh, have prepaid items of 38,000, but the total fund balance for general fund is about like a million and five thousand. So remaining at a fund balance of $917,000. So 
So one of the things that I'd like to do is I'm actually looking at this number compared to the whole um, general fund expenditure, which is $16.2 million. So consolidated a certain ratio of 5.64. Coming a long way now, we do have a positive percentage of the reserve ratio, which is really, really good. Even though it does not meet the, the, uh, the ideal level of like two months to three months of expenditure, but actually, I can see the last couple of years that the city's been doing that research on that. As I mentioned, both pensions and both have our uh, estimates. This would actually do require us to, like, we call the city to disclose what if there's a 1% change in this discount rate. What would be the impact to the financial statement? Okay? So, at June 30, 2020, the city already reported the total net pension liability of $27.6 million on the face of the financial statement. But if the discount rate changed by 1%, if it drops 1% to 6.15, the, uh, the whole life, net pension liability and goes up to $42 million. And vice versa, if the discount rate increases by 1%, your whole net pension liability can drop down to $15.4 million. So that is about like $12 to $13 million, depending on which way you go. The discount rate increase is actually determined based on the expected rate of return on your investment. So as you can, as the market, there's a lot of things that covers never met the 7% uh, goal, but keep that in mind the looking at the long term expected period of return. So basically the actor needs to go back to 30 years and see the, the um the, all of the investment the rate of return has to meet that 7%. So um for the last 30 years actually it does. Okay. However, in the uh, net OPEC line, really, as I mentioned earlier, it's, the city is actually using a methodology, what I call a PSU methodology. So that's why you don't have anything to do with the human capital trust and human resource to pay this liability. So that's why the current discount rate is a lot lower than the, um, the, the discount rate we use on the pension plan. So the 2.66 is actually is the uh, is the double uh, A uh, rate geo bond period. So this is <coughs> let's assume that you need to do while money using the geo bonds, you actually pay 2.66% of interest rate. So that's what the deal is is using the 2.66 uh, percent. So at the end of the day, you do actually show the 27 million dollars in um in um you know we have liability so if it's kind of rate drop by one percent that would go up to thirty nine million dollars and vice versa um if the discount rate increases by one percent um the um the um you know, there's something wrong with the number that should be a twenty six and seven twenty uh thirty three but I'll I'll double check with that number. But the $27 million is actually included in the, um, on the face of the financial statement. So hold on one second. Let me, let me go and check with them. Yeah, that was, that was great. So $29 million. Right. So the other results. We are happy to give you a modified opinion on these financial statements, which state that the financial statement of value presents in all material respect, significant accounting policy and consistently defined. All the estimates are reasonable and the disclosure are properly reflected in this financial statement. A modified opinion is the best opinion that we can get from the CPA firm, and I'm happy to say that for this year's audit, we don't have any internal control. So that's when we are able to rely on the internal control and we did not identify any deficiency that would drag our audit um, um, to uh, more, <coughs> more detailed um, substantive procedures. Okay. So 
So that's kind of concluded my presentation for the uh, for the financial statement. Do you have any any questions for me? And I'm more than happy to answer. So on the general fund balance, uh, where it says the reserve ratio is 5.64. Uh, just so all know, uh, what's the average percentage? Is national average, I think? Or would that be a fair question? Well, there's no national average fund of the best practice in the industry. It's actually using the two months, 16.67%. And uh, because of coronavirus, we basically asking for a little bit more, maybe three months to six months. Um, but I can tell they like five or six percent. Actually, it is significantly good from the two Thank you. Oh, yeah. What are uh, you mentioned um, when you were on the triple board? You mentioned uh, you know, the one where you know, the best way, just like the example that you provided, you know, when you say maybe not, not waivers, but what other things, you know, as far as accounting practices and policy practices has the, you know, the state issue as to, um, because right now we're in a certain time, you know, with the Expenditures and all of that. Have they issued any timelines as to giving you more time to work on your um, audits or well, your yes. reporting? Mm -hmm. Well, unfortunately, from the from the state perspective, on like reporting the uh, the you know, financial transactions report, uh, we don't get any uh, reporting relief from the state. Mm -hmm. However, if you do, do actually get coronavirus relief funds. The audit is actually extended to June 30th of this year. So basically, instead of the, the deadline is tomorrow, we actually got a, a further um, extension to June 30th. However, we are able to <coughs> audit and be sure that we're going to launch very first, which is really, really great. Yeah, I think uh, I still have a couple, couple of funds that are going to utilize that extension. Yeah. So, um, now, uh, um, how long have you been doing this audit for I would have to say about 15, 16 years. Okay. So there, there's been a history because, I mean, I think you're also going back to historical uh, information and just the way that it you know, has been progressing through the years. You know, with the financial statements and uh, practices also, we're alluding to. And, uh, you know, it, it's really, Great to hear that a lot of uh, you know maybe deficiencies or issues that uh, were there before now they're being uh, addressed. And, uh, you know, even though you were very clear that you know, we're just looking at you were, what you were provided, but based on that, you can say that you know you were able to uh, look at everything that was provided to you, and based on that, you know you came up with all these results and you know, all these um, you know um, report. So um, again, for historical, from historical perspective, so um, what has been? I know that um, no research uh, five point, you know, six four something like that, right? Mm -hmm. And well, now we are six uh, on the research. So it was it was that um, the, the percentage that yeah. It's um, Councilman Garcia, just so I can, so now I'll speak from the back. Um, well, I think as the presentation was made by, by Mr. Pun, um, he did a good job in separating the dollar amount for uh, general funding, I'm looking at it that way, and also uh, the reserves on uh, the enterprise fund. So um, when, when we do some some, some math, and, and, and I know it, it was a third presentation, we, we can see on the general fund that it's a, a million five hundred dollars, say you know, a million five thousand, mm -hmm. and um, on the enterprise fund it was if I'm not mistaken four million dollars and change, mm -hmm. which would be a grand total of about over five million dollars. Um, but as it pertains to the general fund, um, we stand right now, um, and we saw quite a few but it's about a million five hundred. Mm -hmm. 
that's kind of very hard to see just to uh, see the options that you know have been uh, shown or have been seen you know, throughout the last uh, few years or even a couple of years. And uh, you know, in spite of uh, you know the current condition that we're going through, there's a leader to the option and uh, you know uh, great great work that you know also has been done uh, to make sure that we have those those uh, uh, you know outcomes. But then also I'm glad to hear that uh, based on your statement that there was nothing found. And it's not that we was found something before, but I uh, think the common practices and in, in, in the way that you know all these uh, you know uh, numbers have been uh, provided and administered with the finances, so, you know, has been actually more popular. So uh, I'm glad to I'm glad to hear that. Yes, and also uh, for information, you know, we like. And our team actually looking at uh, every which foundation we perform with success in every year. We have a lot of relying on what we have in the past. Mm -hmm. We basically come in and look at it from every single year to make sure that the control is fully invited before we actually rely on how, how much testing that we need to perform in uh, validating the numbers. And one of the things that I can tell about um, our, our first strategy actually we want to validate 100% of cash. Analysis. We do a really high percentage of all the capital asset, 100% validated the long term debt, confirming the third party. And we do a lot of search on reported liability, relying on the actuary to determine the, uh, the reasonableness of the net pension liabilities and then also the OPEP liabilities. So that's what we do. We cover a lot during our audit. And we are able to. Uh, after all the options we have to say that we share the financial statement even during a pandemic. Uh, uh, after we do have a pretty good policy because we don't have to do it usually during the um, uh, pandemic time, we refer to look at the internal control because there may be lack of sync terms here and there. But based on what we see so far, we have not identified those. Um, those uh, incident, you know, in, in, in all the same and, and, and Mr. Pun, and, and just to um, piggyback on your statement and, and just to provide a little bit more information to, to the common base by Councilman Garcia, I think it's fair to say that one of the biggest um, uh, county woes that this city experienced um, in recent years was precisely internal controls, right? Um, so um, for us, as, as, as an administrative team, um, and, and, and like I said, um, only providing the information that's requested by a third party auditor, um, I'm very happy to see that not only my, my, my finance department, but everybody else has stepped up and, and obliged with what we need to do in terms of making sure that the accounting practice is, is fairly done per the internal controls that we've set. So, uh, in, in, in a little bit of going back, you know, you were going back uh, a lot, well, a couple of times now, just three of you come out. So, uh, if you can elaborate on that, that versus other options, if someone can keep that kind of elaborate on that model, you know, what would be the difference or what would be the ability for us to keep it away from something else? Or well, is that something that benefits the city? Uh, you know, and, and let me go back to my notes. It's related to the uh, medical yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, insurance. So basically, it's what I'm calling the PSU model. It's basically the insurance company coming with a premium bill. Okay. Okay. I just pay a premium bill. I'm not going to contribute more or contribute less. As long as I'm paying the bills, that's what, what I'm calling the PSU model. There are other options. The city may actually set up what we call as the uh, one, uh, Section 115 trust. To set aside money in the irrevocable trust to pay to lower down your liability on the on the outcomes of one benefit. Is there any special uh, requirements for that, or do you need to meet certain thresholds as far as the finances? Or? No, basically that that is something that we need to to work with the um, um, with the city managers looking at your budget. Do you have additional um, money? Set aside and how much can you contribute to the plan to, to take it off the plan? So, is this referring to just the owner of 
the benefits of our enterprise. So basically, I know the staff will share. So, is there something else that we can do that will be able to help us? Well, oh, I mean, maybe. Absolutely. So, so on that end, one, um, <clears throat> I think well, this is what I call one of the good problems to have as we move forward, because we are now uh, looking uh, into having uh, the opportunity for this government body to make decisions based on the resources that we have now. So, so based on that, we, we can provide the proper analysis as it pertains to the options. Uh, where there can be a cost benefit to the city as it pertains to some of these items like the one that's being referenced right now. Yeah. And, and that, that's what I'm looking at because even though the uh, ability to do uh, the funding for the funding is great, you know, in improving all of that, and I think this, uh, you know, kind of practice with all best practices that you have know, but then also uh, in looking at the opportunities to maximizing, uh, you know, investments for, this, for benefits, uh, for benefits, for the benefits. Something that in this type of body and the duos, and you know, I'm glad to see that um, that there are no um, you know, issues or, or, or at least best practices have been there to uh, uh, build a relationship. I think uh, one of the things, Council Member, that, 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 that we can say, uh, basically, in common, which I appreciate, is the fact that we, we can certainly. Uh, for our obligations as a city to all of our employees that are currently right now working or those that have retired, is is find any type of practice, physical practice out there that could actually provide them the assurance, you know, that, that at some point in the future, uh, their retirement will never be affected, but also those that we have right now can see that they're going to gain something um, from us if, if, if we make the right decision. Yeah, and, and that's exactly where I'm coming from. Yeah. And asking these questions, if we have any opportunities to capitalize and, and, and uh, some of these uh, opportunities or options that we might have. And I know as, as a council, we have to look at that and, and, and see what we stand and hopefully we'll continue uh, in the positive way soon. And uh, you know, they don't come back and make the decisions to make sure that you know we continue to take care of our, of our employees and uh, you know, all the uh, liabilities that, uh, that we have to see. There's a good chance right now that we're in the, in the heart of our budget process um, that, that, that we can begin to have that level of conversation, right? Um, because um, as we move forward with, with completing our budget process for the next fiscal year, one of the things that we're going to see is that we're now going to encounter opportunities um, that, that can actually address some of the fiscal needs that the city has. And, and that is because the more we, 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 we step away from fulfilling obligations that we had needed in previous years to keep our city afloat, now that we, uh, in other words, have taken care of those matters, <coughs> now we can focus our attention as to other opportunities that we can be. Yes. The general council made this for a and transportation development article three and eight. So what is only two? Well, there's the only two funding that the city is actually receiving from the county. So, uh, AP is really on the on the bike. Uh, Excuse me, for the county or for the state? For the state. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. So, there's only like two coming from like two two articles uh, coming from the uh, from the state. And Article uh, 3 is really for the pedestrian and bike, uh, bicycle uh, project. And then also, AP is used to pay for any capital expenses incurred while contracting for transit services. The problem again for all nonprofit companies for public transportation services within the city. We do need a motion, Madam Mayor, to um, 
receive and file the report? Okay. Do I have a motion to receive and file 2019 and 2020? Do I have a motion to receive and file 2019 and 2020? And I'll second that. <clears throat> Councilmember Romo? Yes. Councilmember Garcia? Yes. Councilmember Ureña? Councilmember Ureña? Okay, looks like he's well, one, one, one second, sorry. Um. <clears throat> we have a motion on the floor to receive and file the report. Oh, aye. I, I would, yes. Uh, Okay. Mayor Bertrand Moreno? Aye. Mayor Rola Fernandez? Aye. Motion passes unanimously.